Mr. President, I noticed in your speech you mentioned many times about ASEAN centrality. Mm. I review the TAC, which your father signed, that showed the bond of ASEAN. I think the ASEAN centrality is very important, but it's not, we cannot take it for granted. It comes actually uh, comes from the ASEAN way, the three principles. First, mutual respect. Second, consensus building. Third, considerate other parties' comfort level. In my words, to put it simply, we can summarize it as three notes. No intervention and no use of force and no happy up hot spots. Only because of these principles strictly followed by ASEAN members and other stakeholders that we have ensured the ASEAN and East Asia at large for a long lasting peace since the end of the colonial rules in history. So we cherish a lot. I fully agree with you. I support the centrality of ASEAN. And even some professor like uh, Ma, Keshaw Makboni, he suggests ASEAN is deserved to award the peace, Nobel Peace Prize. I agree with him. Thank you very much. I yeah. think uh, your question is, do you agree with me? So President Marcus, yes, please. Yes, my question is, much. President, in the eyes of the international community, some of your Philippines behavior in recent day, in recent times, it now sounds like you really consider other parties' comfort level, and there is a risk of ruining the regional long-earned, long-lasting peace since the end of the, uh, you know, colonial history. What's your comments on that? Thank you very much. Well, I uh, I cannot imagine what you must be referring to if the uh, if the reference or the allusion is to. Uh, the Philippines uh, uh, somehow uh, tearing apart uh, the what we have agreed on with uh, in, ASEAN, in, uh, in, in terms of ASEAN centrality. Uh, quite the contrary. I think the, I think if you uh, uh, examine more closely the remarks that I just made, we I precisely uh, focus on ASEAN centrality, and that the principles that are laid down that are involved in the, the concept of ASEAN centrality are some things that we must use to guide us. And if we have been distracted in the past years or so, then it's time for us to return and remember once again what ASEAN was created for. And uh, that is uh, to create an aggr aggregation of uh, nations uh, that uh, have very many uh, common interests and that can be and that Partnership and partnerships within that multilateral, that multilateral organization can help each other and help the region. And so uh, the Philippines is still, uh, is, is still remains true to the principles that uh, were established and upon which uh, ASEAN was born. And I think, uh, as I said, that uh, many of these things there were, uh, we, we no longer speak of today, but we must, because they are as relevant that today as they ever were, perhaps even more so, because the global, the global uh, situation is a great deal more complicated than it used to be before. Uh, I, would, I would even go far as to say there is no such thing as a regional issue any longer. Uh, we have all experienced the, the unexpected effects of the war in Ukraine, of the conflict in, in, in the Middle East, uh, and uh, all of these, and, in the, and when we talk about the South China Sea, we have to also remember that uh, the South China Sea is, is the passageway for half of the world trade, and therefore, the peace and stability of the South China Sea and the freedom of navigation of the South China Sea is a world issue. And that is what I am proposing. And I am saying that this is, a re this is, yes, it is a regional issue, but we must examine and be part of the discussion. We must include 
uh, all parties in that discussion because now it is not just ASEAN member states who are stakeholders and it is quite, uh, it is quite easy to see that it is in fact the entire world that have become stakeholders in the peace and stability of our region.